Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support midgard musings through facebook patreon teespring redbubble uh anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you i appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all Alright everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, my apologies for having been sort of MIA the last uh, few weeks, uh, last couple weeks at least, um, but thank you for your continued support. Between a new job position and uh, dealing with a head cold, which I'm actually still trying to get over, um, the worst of it was last week, which is why I wasn't able to do a video. Um, between those several things and trying to just get acclimated into a new lifestyle due to a new job position and all that fun stuff. Um, it's been challenging for me to uh, get the content out here every week, like I know you all expect to, um, but your support ongoing is definitely appreciated. As I said in the intro of the video, we are pursuing 2,000 subscribers. Be sure to go down into the description and check out everything that you can do to support the channel, become a subscriber if you aren't already, all that kind of fun stuff. But all that business has been taken care of, so let's go ahead and jump into the topic of discussion today, uh, which is going to be on the power of oaths um, and oathing, okay, swearing oaths. Um, it's more than just a promise, right? Um, so before we actually get into that discussion, let's go ahead and get our incense burning and our candle lit and then uh, talk about this subject. All right, there's the incense. Candle. There will be the candle here in just a minute. <laughs> there it goes. All right. <clears throat> this out of the way. All right, folks. So, oaths, right? The swearing of oaths. The the it, it, when I when I say that it's more than just a promise. Um, the term oath. Um, is an actual, it, it, it's an older word, and it has roots in older languages that predate, um, you know, just our normal English words. When we say oath, we're, we're talking, or what most people think today, uh, you know, that we're talking about things that are, you know, uh, promises, um, vows, if you will. Um, the word itself is, is its origin is, a, is in uh, Germanic languages, and the old Norse word, that it goes back to is the word either. I'm going to try and put that up here uh, so way you guys can see it um, on the screen. Either, which is oath um, in Old Norse. Um, <clears throat> but it is, it's, it's, it's much more than just a promise. It's much more than just saying that I promise to do thus and thus. Um, it has much more weight behind it than just that, and the purpose of today's discussion is to try to elaborate a bit on what the weight of an oath, how much of the weight actually, you know, 
how much it carries, how much weight it actually carries. Um, so taking an oath, or giving an oath, as a heathen is, many would argue, and I, and I would back this up, is, is, it's serious business. You know, this isn't something that you just enter into nonchalantly or casually or without any regard to what you're actually doing, okay? Um, you will see many instances, uh, or, or you, you may hear of a lot of instances of folks giving oaths uh, or making oaths to the gods, to our deities that we venerate. Um, oaths may also be given to our ancestors um, and to our community, to one another. You know, and that's where the actual weight of what I'm talking about with the oath is going to, where we're actually going to try to focus things on, right? Um, because it, it, in a heathen context, an oath is not just a personal promise. It's not just saying to the whoever's, whether it be the gods or to your ancestors or to, you know, your, your people, your folk, the community uh, with whom you share uh, your life with. Um, it's not just a promise of saying that I'm going to do something or another. Um, and it's more like a vow, all right? Be and I say vow because the term vow may be something that more people can recognize and understand or, or find a meaning to in modern context. Um, but it's, a, it, it's, a, it, it's something that you are going to decree publicly, and in doing so, when you do that, when you give this decree, when you say what you're saying uh, as, as being something that you're going to do or, or accomplish or what have you, um, by doing this, you're binding yourself to honoring that that that, sit, that 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 promise, if you will. The thing that you're saying you're going to do, you are now binding yourself to doing it, and the binding of yourself to doing it extends beyond just you. Okay, and extends beyond just an individual or personal thing. Um, and, and in that sense, it is that you work that promise into your weird by saying it and by speaking it and by declaring it. You have now entered into the realm of weird, and you and you are now putting your word into the well that is going to become something of not just your future but to the future of those around you and who are present and who are witness to this said oath or vow uh, whatever you want to call it okay um, and, it, and, it, and when I say that it, it binds not just you it binds yourself that's where the meat of the weight of an oath is held okay because when you take an oath you don't bind just yourself. You bind those who bear witness to that oath. Anyone who is present um, is now tied into that part of weird, right? The, the, the threads have been extended and now they as witnesses are part of weird. So they, you know, you haven't just entered into your own weird. You have now included and involved others with it. Um, and the reason that is, or, or the weight that, that is carried behind that, is that they are now obligated um, to sort of help you honor the oath that you have sworn to take, or that honor that vow, honor that promise, if you will, right? You know, so o the oaths that we speak, the oaths that we, that we orate, okay, or that we say, are, are woven into a much larger web than just our own, you know? Promising that you will do what you're able to do um, and work to improve, that's different than promising something specific. Um, and that's where a promise is different than an oath. Because an oath is going to be something that you literally focus on that one specific thing and you have included now everybody else around you to be witness to that and to hold you responsible and hold you accountable for the keeping or breaking of that oath. Um, you don't swear oaths if you know or suspect or even think that you may not be able to keep it um, or uphold it. 
don't add specific things to your oath that um, such you know such variables that uh, or, or factors that you or, or, or that that could inevitably change outside of your own you know uh, abilities don't add those things don't add those variables to your oath um, we don't want to give things such as you know uh, out, outlandish or unreasonable lengths of time to accomplish some things. We may we may see an example of an oath uh, that, that that is given as uh, somebody who wants to um, maybe lose a certain amount of weight. Okay, just and we're just going to use that as a hypothetical example because that seems to be a very common thing of uh, being tossed around as you know I'm out of shape. I need to you know lose a certain amount of pounds and I'm going to I am oathing now in front of my, my, my folk in front of this tribe my, my, my people um, that I'm going to lose you know 35 pounds if that's a reasonable number of weight to lose uh, I'm gonna lose 35 pounds in uh, you know a, a month or two or let's just say a month you know that, that is an outlandish and that is an unreasonable number to, to bind yourself to and to bind others to. Now, if you were to say, I'm, I, I'm going to lose 35 pounds in a year, that's much more reasonable, that's much more accomplishable, um, and, and people can help you, and you can do that, certainly. Um, that, that is a reasonable and that is a attainable goal uh, to achieve. So you want to not give unreasonable lengths of time, you don't want to give un unreasonable demand, uh, you know, requirements within your oath, and you certainly don't want to do things that are outside of your um, ability to control. Now, <clears throat> the, the things that are set if you don't accomplish your oath, if you don't fulfill your oath, is is or, or, is something that is called a uh, shield. Uh, we're going to get into that towards the end of the video, but just bear that in mind. Now, some people will want to swear oaths to deities, uh, which, like I mentioned before, uh, among the things that we can swear oaths uh, to is, is swear oaths to our gods. Now, I, I caution people for doing so um, because there will be inevitably times when our lives become different than what they are at the time of our oath taking or oath swearing, whatever, um, that you're not going to be able to necessarily fulfill a certain thing. Let's say you want to swear an oath, you know, uh, to Thor to, you know, work out five days a week whatever you want to swear an oath to Freya to you know give an offering to her three days a week um, whatever that whatever your specific things that you may say are um, that is your oath to that to that deity that is your promise okay and, and again we're, we're, we're dividing things between oaths and promises and there's a reason for that it's because the oath actually requires tangible things to be present when and when we're when we're speaking of the sacred um, and they not necessarily being physically on the same level as we are, the sacred versus the profane. Um, you know, when you, when you go and you say, you know, I'm going to swear to Thor that I work out five days a week to honor him, and you can only, you know, every day or every week, you know, I'm going to work out five days a week every week, and let's say you only accomplish that, you know, uh, three times out of the month, and one week of the month you only go there three days of the week. You know, have you fulfilled your oath? Have you have you truly and completely fulfill what it is that you say that you're going to do and if you haven't are you then now an oath breaker which as many of, he uh, of us as, as heathens know um, oath breakers um, within this social construct are generally deemed as um, very bad for the society very bad for the tribe very bad for the community and you don't want to be an oath breaker, so you definitely don't want to take on more than you can accomplish. You don't want to bite off more than you can chew, more than you're capable of. Um, it's definitely not a good idea, and it's not something that you want to enter into. Okay. An oath is a binding contract. Is is essentially what the 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 the, the, the essence behind it is. It's a verbal binding contract between you and whoever, whether it be you and your the deity that you're swearing to, or you and the folk of your community that you're swearing this to, it is a verbally binding contract. Um, and you need to uphold your end of the deal. Um, 
you know, so, so without knowing the specifics of an oath, without knowing the specifics of what the requirements are to fulfill that oath, if you go into something very nonchalant or just, you know, because of maybe the honeymoon stage of your, of your <laughs> introduction to heathenry, you know, maybe you're a newer heathen and, and you're like, yes, I'm going to swear this to Odin, swear this to Thor, swear this to the... Pump the brakes, my friend, just, just kind of go easy when it comes to with your in, in, uh, enthusiasm about swearing oaths because you're, you're, you're getting into territory that is now very deep and very weighty and you don't want to just throw those things out there because you're all gung-ho about doing something because of the newer stages of your path, okay? Now swearing oaths to one another, the folk that we dwell in and around, the people who we share our lives with, um, one big example that we could probably draw from is that of whether you're heathen or not, okay? Because I know there's probably people who will be watching these videos who are not necessarily heathen who may see something like this and say, well, that's not really my angle, that's not my approach in life, but let's look at wedding vows, okay? Um, and you're getting married, whether you're heathen or not. You take vows uh, to... Uh, or, or promises of fidelity. You, you, you swear to be with this person um, in sickness and in health, whatever the outlining details of the vow, the wedding vow are. Uh, this, is a, this is a verbal contract. This is an oath that you are taking with one person and another. Um, you're taking vows of fidelity, loyalty, respect, or whatever. Um, and you know, symbolically, as you make that promise, a thread is now woven, or a thread now emerges uh, from your heart, and it connects you to your spouse, that person to whom you are swearing this oath, okay? Now imagine that you are a heathen, whether you are or not. Let's just, let's, let's broaden this high, the horizon, let's, let's bring a bigger picture um, into this uh, scenario, okay? Um, in the same scenario, a wedding let's say um, you're taking an oath and now instead of one person uh, you know having a thread emerge from one person to another all of the witnesses all of the people there um, now have threads extended into into their lives they are now witnesses to this oath that is being given between these two people, and so therefore this oath, this oath taking has now interacted and it has now affected everybody there who is present. Uh, everyone in the hall, everyone in the, in the area. Um, so, and then the threads from everyone in the room come back to and connect to you and yours. So there's this reciprocal thing, there's this, there's this connection that is now established through the spoken word, through the, through, the, through the action of taking an oath that now ties weird with everybody that is present. And it connects you to one another. That is the power of an oath, okay? That is the power of the oath, and that it is more than just a promise. It's more than just saying, yes, I promise to be faithful, I promise be there for this person in their sickness and in health, and I promise to this and that. Just as that example, the, the power is that now you have included and involved everybody else in the room, in, the, in that area, and they are now bound to you through, through that oath. It's very solemn, it's very weighty, and it's, and it's something that should not be taken lightly. Um, oaths in a heathen context, right? Um, it, it, it needs to include both an oath giver to the minimum. It needs to include, include an oath giver, okay, which is the one who speaks the oath, one who says what they are doing, or what they oath to do, what they swear to do. And it requires an oath taker or takers, okay, those who are there to bear witness to the oath and to declare what I mentioned earlier uh, as shield, okay. Now, depending on how much of a historical heathen you are and how much of a reconstructionist type of hardcore uh, historical heathen you are, you know, that, that, that shield that is set is set by a certain individual, could be set by another individual. Again, this, this depends on just kind of how your 
social structure is within your tribe or kindred, whatever you want to call it. Um, but what I'm talking about when I, when I say shield, um, when an oath is taken, um, and, th and this goes back to historical heathenry uh, 101, basically, when, when, when oaths are taken, a shield is set. And that is that it is a price, uh, sort of like a ransom or a price that is set. Um, that must be paid should the oath taker be unable to fulfill their obligation or unable to fulfill their oath. All right, so if one fails to uphold the, the outlining definition of what their oath is, then the shield that must be paid is what was set by the person who set that shield, usually the lord of the hall, the, the, the chieftain, um, uh, somebody of, of an important status may not necessarily be the Lord or Chieftain or, or Gothi or whoever, whatever your social construct of your, your, your tribal structure may be. Um, somebody has set the shield, you know. So typically what you might see is that there's going to be somebody who says, I, I vow, I, I, I oath here now in front of you all to, to do thus, thus, and thus. All right, now if it were me saying that, there should be somebody there who should say, hold up now. Just to, just to recap, you have, you have now said that you are going to accomplish A, B, and C. Are you sure about this? And I'm going to say, I am definitely sure about this. I can accomplish this within. And then the witnesses around are going to say, okay, well, he said this, and, and we're now all tied to this. And the, and the one who sets the shield is going to say, well, if you can't, and if you don't, this is the price that you pay. This is what you must do to sort of bring back into balance the 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 good and the bad that, that, that kind of gets poured into that well, the well of the weird, all right? So the one who sets the shield is, is sort of the one that calls in that debt. Um, and, and so if I were to say that, it, you know, I vow to, or I, I oath now to, you know, lose 35 pounds in a year's time, in 365 days from today, I will lose 35 pounds. And I'm just using this as a hypothetical. Um, if I do not lose 35 pounds if I, in, in 30, 365 days, the shield that is set for me, whatever that may be, I need to, you know, at the next gathering or whatever, I need to be the kitchen wench. I need to clean all the dishes. I need to pour all the meat. I need to do whatever. Whatever that shield is, I am now bound to either accomplish my oath and fulfill it or pay the ransom, pay the debt to bring balance back to everything, all right? So you're, you're, you're bound by your word when you enter into an oath, and the oath process must involve at least two people, the oath giver and the oath taker, the one who is going to be there to demand the shield be paid, uh, to set that shield um, in the event that you are, or whoever it is, is unable to accomplish their oaths. All right, so the reason why I wanted to do this video, um, you know, everybody, is because I see a lot of stuff that happen on social media platforms, different groups, you know, um, you know, people posting pictures or videos or things like that, talking about them, you know, I, I've sworn my oath, I, I, I've oathed into my tribe, I've oathed into my kindred, whatever. None of that is business of mine because that is their call, their call, um, but I just wanted to bring this out in and shed some light on the fact that don't throw that term around so lightly don't be casual about it don't think that just because you promise to do something to the void okay that it is now that's it and, and then there's no accountability for it there is there is 100% accountability um, for oathing and it requires there to be a tangible presence of the oath giver and the oath taker at least those two those two people so Guys, if you're out here watching this video and you decide you want to take an oath and you want to oath to do something or another, take your oaths. Keep your oaths. Do not break your oaths. Don't be an oath breaker um, and be accountable for the things that you say that you're going to do. It not only affects you and your weird and the things that happen for you ongoing, but it affects those who are now tied to you because they have entered into that verbal agreement they have entered into that that, that social construct with you um, and and they and they are now affected and they and their weird is now tied with yours 
So I hope this video has been helpful uh, to anybody that's been thinking about weird. There's going to be some information down in the description of some articles that I would encourage everybody to check out um, at your leisure. Um, talking a bit more about the historical aspects, you know, when it comes to what you swear your oaths over, the whole thing about swearing oaths on weapons um, has a very, very strong historical context uh, connected uh, to things. So how that is included in, in today's society and in, in us as There's going to be some information down in the description of some articles that I would encourage everybody to check out um, at your leisure. Um, talking a bit more about the historical aspects, you know, when it comes to what you swear your oaths over, the whole thing about swearing oaths on weapons um, has a very, very strong historical context uh, connected uh, to things. So how that is included in, in today's society and in, in us as modern heathens uh, could be an interesting thing to add. But check out the description down below for those articles and let me know what you guys think. If you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about the whole oathing process. Does it apply to you now? Do you work oaths into your own heathen practices? And if so, how? If you want to so share. All right. You definitely don't have to, um, but anything that you want to share is appreciated. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, share the videos, all that fun stuff. The more you interact, the more of these videos and like these videos that you'll see. I'll see you all in next week's video, which is going to be a continuation of the deity discussion series. More on that will be uh, included and in, uh, introduced throughout this week. So thank you all again so much for watching. Everybody that's watching live on Facebook, please stick around so I can read your comments. Hail, and I'll see you in next week's video.